and uh, your uni dark gold.
And uh, yeah, we have now three minutes twenty to left. Another three minutes, and it's at least the goals trying here to score or something like that because they bring all the players in front. But now, after immediately after the first or let's say the second pass, they are losing the ball to Mulch, and they are immediately attacking the basket here again and again with their waves of attacking waves. And now we see here Jochen Schottmiller playing around the corner. And now Jochen Schottmiller with the number four now coming, passing the ball through to Marco Sekar with the number one. But well defended here by the Golds. This was well done. But the only chance it seems they have is tackling away the attack. They, yeah. they, it, they cannot stop, really stop it. They tackle it away to the surface. Then we will see probably the ball dropping down like we did before. And then we have here again. Then we have a fast counter attack. And uh, mostly the goal uh, defense is not uh, good enough in place and not safe enough in place to stop the attack. So you know, I think we're back again. I guess you can hear us. Uh, please give us feedback in the live stream chat if the sound is better now or if we have to recalibrate again. You will see the second half here in the game. Serious foul Malch in blue against Unidad Goals from Australia. And we have two minutes left in the second half. And it's a 13-0 lead. And we have seen a super half. dominant match from the Malch team here, the German champion, with a lot of goals in the first half. The halftime was already, the halftime score was 10-0 with goals made by, let's say, Jens Dingel, Colin Leibler, Martin Schottmiller, Jochen Schottmiller. We've seen a score for Matthias Otten and uh, at least I also think Marcus Hedrat. But now we see here in the second half, Malch has uh, um, substituted some players. They're playing a bit more, they put less offers here in the attacking. Nevertheless, they have all the good opportunities. And right now here you see a strategy, a p attack pattern here with Marcus Hedrat trying to steal the basket on the below level. And this time it didn't work. So we see here now the goals here in ball possession are trying to get in the opponent side, but it's always like just one pass or two pass and they're losing the ball to Mulch. Yes, in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, situation, um, you always see Mulch succeeding in uh, stripping the ball off the hands of the Australian players, and then they immediately switch to go in a counter-attack and overrun the defense. Now we have no defense under the basket and it's a uh, it's almost easy for them this to was go also into a great it. move here Perfect. you have seen like it should be it was probably Matthias Otten or Christian Hirsch I've not seen it clearly who was stealing the defender position and it was Michael Wiesel here from the open side who was swimming through and just pushed the ball into the basket 14-0 here after the goal from Michael Wiesel half a minute left so this game is uh, over and uh, very impressive uh, performance here from Malch. They seem really up to it and they're getting into the rhythm of the Champions Cup and uh, the goals, I think they, they will be, they, they look still surprised uh, from the game of Malch and uh, I think they will not be happy with the outcome. Definitely not, at least they lost yesterday, to, well, we mentioned it, 11-0 against the Orcas. I think they have expected to have here a lower result. Yeah. At least, at, let's say Orcas are the winner of the last Champions Cup, so yeah. let's say they have a fav favorite role here. And, and, and game is over. Second half here, we have a 14-0 lead. 14-0 victory in favor for Malch. We have seen many goals here from the Malch players. Some empty net goals, for example, from... Uh, Martin Schottmiller, we have seen Jens Dingel stealing the basket, putting it in. We have seen Jochen Schottmiller physically scoring. And uh, we have also some, seen some team attacks. Because not so, since you can hear us, uh, we can introduce ourselves to Sauce. Just, uh, I have Thorsten with me. And uh, I'm Wolf. We are both uh, from uh, Berlin. Thorsten moved to Berlin. And is now playing uh, in my club. And here we see already the backs of... Uh, And uh, we try also to have more commentators throughout uh, the Champions Cup as we did at the World Championships in Cards. And it gives different perspectives, it gives different uh, emotions into the game. And it, I think altogether 
uh, me and Lorena, we commented uh, a lot in the last years. So we want to give this uh, knowledge and this uh, um, We want to coach some new people. Yeah. And we want to raise new commentators uh, to have a broader um, membership of commentators. We share the same way to do it. So this is what we try to do here at the Champions Cup. And I think this is the second game we do together, Lorena, isn't it? What? It's the second game we uh, commentate together. I think so. It's second or third, yeah. And do you remember uh, six yeah. years ago when we did all the games? Oh, yeah. I mean, besides the last year and this year, we did uh, in 2014, 15, 16, and 17, all three days. All the and, and now when we have the added of the academy, then we start on Thursday already and. It's really so hard on the voice and, and, and on the brain as well. So um, it's nice to have some change, but we try to to comment more games together because it's also it's, it's a lot of fun for us for us to do. So the game so, coming up. Uh, Orcas uh, Vienna. Then let's uh, read the teams. We have uh, here is the no. This is the female. I have Vienna, so I start with. Uh, yeah. So, uh, number four, Jan Kindermann, number three, Andreas Tanzmann, number two.